This is awesome. I love upcycling. I wanted to show you some really cool projects we're going to start today. It's just amazing what you can do with taking an old suit jacket and pants and combine it together to create a coat. Something that I can use every day. That's what I love about these projects is taking something like this beautiful wedding dress uh, that we thrifted uh, not too long ago. It wasn't expensive. I think we paid $10 for it. We wanted to find a way to be able to use this dress on a regular basis rather than just for a, a special occasion. The idea that we have here with this beautiful dress is I'm thinking that, that we're going to actually cut it right about here just on the high waist. We're going to turn this into two pieces. This is just gorgeous. There's so much length that we pulled up on the back side. Well, instead of cutting anything off here, we're going to see what we can do about pulling some of this material up and changing the look right here. I really don't like the look here uh, with the hips, the way it forms down. And so thinking about once we cut this and dye it, I'm going to dye it a purple. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's amazing what you can do with uh, just changing up the colors. But we're going to actually bring this up a little bit. I'm not sure how we're going to pull it in, but we're going to be able to hand sew different areas to be able to give it a completely different look and actually take that a totally different format around the, uh, the hips here. It's really nice when you have a long dress that you actually have the material to work with that you can actually pull it up. So this is amazing. So we have all this material where it does up in the back. Probably going to be cutting it right about here. What I'm going to do is just have a certain amount of straps for the back side here so that you'll still be able to tighten it in. Um, there might be, uh, let's see, one, two, three loops that we'll be able to use. And then the top will still have five loops uh, to be able to turn it into something special. Uh, maybe a corset. I'm not sure what, but it, it's a lot of fun to be able to just try to utilize these pieces. So I went ahead and took all the strapping off here. Let's just set that aside and decide how I'll separate that up into two pieces when I go ahead and cut this. just wanted to show you. It is a little bit complex because there is a piece back here that overlaps. So what I have to do is I'm going to cut this from the back side, measure it from the back side because I want to follow the straps. But I just want to make sure that I, I can go right through with the cutter and be able to make sure that I have these straps lined up when I go and put a ruler on it. We are going to try <laughs> to see how I can cut through. This is very thick, so I'm going to go slow. And I'm going to stay right on the edge of the ruler. I'm going to watch my hands. Just go really slow. Slow is Slow and steady wins the race. This is one of the hardest parts of the whole job. It's probably getting through the embroidered parts. I can see where I'm going, but what, I, what I'm finding is that this is a little bit more difficult with this. So I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to try to just cut through because I've got, I know where my line is now and I'll just go slowly. There we go. Okay, so we've got it apart. Multiple layers here. Let's see how many layers we have. So this is actually stitched together, which is great. So we have just the inner layer to be able to stitch together. And I think I might stitch this by hand. I'll have to see. But that, that will work perfectly. And we still have our three loops here on both sides. And they're in line. So we're doing good. So now I'm going to see what I can do about sewing. I think I'm going to try some fabric tape first. And then we can always add some hand stitching on later. Just see what how this this uh, works. I just put a little piece in between the two layers here, and I can always trim it later too. You know, there's there's not as many rules as we have to make out to be. I don't worry about perfection. 
when I'm doing this, whether it's a cut. You can always trim up later, add to it. The main thing is you're having fun and you're just experimenting. So I'm just kind of doing that right on there, trying to see what happens. I'm going to let that, that cool for a second. I'm going to see how that, it appears that it actually came together just beautifully. But I'll have to, uh, I might have to actually do it a little bit longer. Let it set right here. I did put a small piece in just to try it out and see how it was going. For me, the, the, the sewing probably would have been a little bit, well, about, about the same time. And it maybe it would have been a little bit easier. But I just love, I love the process of taping uh, taping it and, and then adding some some steam to it and s sealing it in and it didn't you know I think this whole process took me about 10 minutes to do but uh, I'm gonna trim it up after I get it all sealed together it's amazing though when you, you think of when you when we were children we had the ability to just create and laugh about things and not worry about perfections and you know, I think that's what stops us from doing things these days, is that we we just, oh, well, it has to be a certain way, or you have to do it this way, or you have to do it that way. You don't have to do it any way, but your way. And you just have fun with it. So as you can see, um, this is these layers have all come together here. And I'm a little off with the scissors. There's a few, a few areas that I want to trim up. So I'm just going to let this uh, set up for a little bit, this um, fabric tape. And I can always add in more tape uh, later on, or I can actually just add some stitches. So it's not a big deal. But right now I'm just looking at it and I'm saying, okay, well, it's fairly straight. I like that. There's a little bit of a groove here, but that's okay because once again, it's the imperfections that make it beautiful. Love the black, the green, and the red together. It didn't quite fit. I did want it to uh, to do something with it, so I cut the sleeves apart here underneath. And Heather got the idea to ruche the sleeves up and create a balloon sleeve for me. So she's going to go ahead and do that this week, and I can't wait to see uh, see how it looks. Just before I get started on the bag, I just wanted to show you. I just took a pot full of water, and I'm going to I'm soaking this wedding dress. Uh, which is no longer a wedding dress because we cut it up and we're going to start something new with it. So we're going to let that soak for 24 hours. I almost forgot. Heather has some trim left from a previous wedding dress we used to upcycle into different magical pieces. And she wanted me to soak this because she's going to actually dye this purple too. So it's amazing how you can use all your materials. You can save everything and find a purpose for it. I like quick and easy. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just going to use an electric sander. I just have a piece of uh, fine uh, sandpaper on here. and I don't know if it's, it's fine. It's a 100 grit sandpaper, um, but it's, uh, it's probably a very common used uh, sandpaper. It's just, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just give it a light buff everywhere. It's very important to know that when you're painting a leather or leather uh, feel of a material that might be it might be synthetic, you want to make sure that you rough up the surface so you don't have a smooth surface to be able to have the uh, paint adhere to it. If it's too smooth, uh, sometimes you can have problems with it without using a uh, um, a primer. It, you can have issues with it actually staying on, especially if you bend it. So that's about 10 seconds to be able to do this area. And you can tell when you do it because it actually creates tooth. It takes that shine off a little bit and that's going to help the paint adhere wonderfully. I'm just going to take a big brush here. Same, uh, this is a three inch brush and pretty beaten up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to put on a very thin coat of paint and then I'm going to hair dry it. And we're going to turn this into something unique. 
just get the dust off before the paint goes on. You should always have it nice and dry and clean. So we'll just start with the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. These are just a uh, Exterior acrylic paints, interior exterior acrylic paints. This is a uh, old floorboard that I had and I just uh, try to repurpose as much as possible. Uh, so the theme here, how about, uh, well, Heather's, uh, Heather loves Monet, loves Impressionism. So what I'm going to just do is start with just this literally one minute job of not really thinking, but just starting with the, maybe some deeper colors as a base and kind of covering up this original just by zigzagging back and forth. You can see that there, how I'm doing that. As soon as I get the top done here, I'm going to just give it a light hair dry. I'm going to try to be inconsistent with my colors. Maybe I'll take some blue and, and I'm using very small amounts of paint. Okay. And I'm really not thinking about anything but covering up that with a very thin coat. The brown. I just going to mix up some variety. I don't really know what image I'm doing. It seems like so many people love Van Gogh's work. And uh, I'm just going to show you this. I'm just going to kind of rub that on. I'm going to go right over the um, zipper too, but I'm going to do it very lightly. I'm not going to go as heavy there. By the way, the second coat, it, it covers so much better than the first. So, and you'll find that each layer you put on, but it, you just get these, these coats on real super thin. It will really help the paint bind and create an image. Going fast kind of makes you not think, just do. And that's a lot of fun to see what you, you can kind of come up with while you're creating this. Um, I kind of like the idea, this is the bottom of the bag here, and I kind of like the idea of starting with some deeper colors. When you work with small amounts of paint, your brush is always never overly loaded with paint. And that's an important thing because when you get lots of uh, your paint sop and wet, your brush, and it's just loaded, it's hard to change colors. So for those who are starting out with colors and you, you know, that's a kind of a, a new thing for you, make sure you use baby amounts of paint. Smaller brushes would be a good idea too, not one this big. Although it depends what type of look you're looking for. If you're more of a loose look, like right now, um, a combina a color combination that looks really good with purples is, well, I could try a, um, an orange. I'm just going to use the tip of the brush here. Uh, and, I'm just going to decide if I want to kind of place on uh, maybe some, oh, you know, tulips are coming, right? And uh, just kind of imagining inconsistently. And I'm just using a big brush to get an idea of color. I'm not worried about the form so much right now. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back and I'm just going to imagine some softer colors in the up, upper part of the picture. image will morph into something. Got small amounts of paint. Now I'm just going to go off to the sides and I'm going to try to work some of my lighter colors, for example, up on top. If you have the darker colors on the bottom of the bag, it'll look more right side up. So that's kind of a little tip that can really help. So I'm just kind of working some warm colors against some cool colors because they complement each other. like the idea of this bag becoming whimsical. I'm just going to start with blue and red. And I'm just going to make a really deep dark color. And I think I'm going to just start with creating some lines here. is only paint. You can you can adjust anything you want as you go along. Paint's a lot of fun to add into fabric 
and designing fashion because it's quick and easy. It's fairly inexpensive. I'm going to just take that. You see my wiping my brush off here and I can take a rag. I have actually a rag here that uh, an old, sh old shirt. That's another great thing. You have something that's all worn out. You can just repurpose it into a rag for this. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of go ahead and maybe add on a few stems. I just want to kind of create. I'm not really thinking. I'm just going to let uh, tr the true creative process take take a hold of how this is coming together. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to follow along what I see. Little individual things, just like a child does when they're creating. They're just kind of imaginary, right? Just piece something on and then they go on to something else. They don't really think hard about it. Sometimes covering up all the work they had already done. It's great to enjoy the process of, of creating. To me that's that's really what it's about. And that's just like you're when you're crocheting a piece or um, knitting or whatever you enjoy doing. It's all about that process. But this one here, it's one of the first things that children are introduced to when they're very young. A lot of times it's, it's, it's just color and form, movement, you know, and they just try to explore and manipulate those three things. And that's what we're uh, we're doing right now. We're just having fun with it. We're not thinking, not like trying to follow a, like, oh, you have to put this here or that there. You just kind of play with it and see what happens. So I love a variety of colors. I just love colors. And so sometimes it's really nice to, you just decide on what you want to, what you want to add to this. Like I want to have a little bit of yellows, some vibrant yellows. And maybe it is spring that I'm hoping for right now in my subconscious. Maybe it's that I want to see a little bit of of vibrance. Yellow by itself I can actually have a, a greenish uh, hue to it. So if you want to lose that and you ever find it looks a little greenish, all you do is you add just a speck of red into yellow and that, that fixes the whole problem. I'll add some blues, light blue. You can make some something pop when you put one color against another. It's amazing what that can do. Just having fun with it. But it's a pretty color too. Maybe I'll even add a little bit of sky blue rolling through here. If you ever do get it on a little bit thicker, just make sure that it cures for two days before you go to use it. That will really help it bind. This has a little bit of, it's in between a matte and a, and a semi-gloss, the sheen to this. So it, I kind of like that because for me, I don't have a glare when I'm looking at the bag, if there's light shining on it. And that, that, that means a lot to me. When they used to use a lot of linseed oil and paintings, one thing I, if you ever go to various galleries, um, you might notice that in some of the older art. And it, it can be really a, a hard thing to look at when you have a glare off your art. I'm just going to go ahead and get a little bit of this green in. I'm bringing it downward because I just kind of want to bring my eyes down. Not thinking too hard. I'm just really having fun with this. Keeping my lighter colors on top. make the bag look right side up. Over the years I had worked, uh, I guess teaching, but I was more of a student, uh, visual arts and all, all ages. <laughs> I had a lady that came that was over a hundred years of age at one time and there was uh, children that were down to toddlers and uh, babies with their first brush strokes. It was just amazing to see what everybody can do. Through that experience, yeah, over a period of, well, 40 years, I guess, I'm just blown away at how so many people think they can't do this, uh, that, that it's too complex. And yet once they start doing it and they realize that there isn't, 
there isn't as many rules as they thought there were as far as you know you obviously want to put the paint on thin because it's going to adhere better uh, sometimes you can actually put it on thick depends what you're doing uh, but just the fact that once you figure out that wait a minute there is no rules this is just fun it's enjoying the process and if I learn a little bit about color form and movement I can have a lot of fun doing this I like the movement of curvature sharp edges sometimes but I like curves the most it's a lot of fun to you know, just deepen up a little bit of the color in here the bottom is truly creating. Right, I think it's coming along now. This is fun. It's fun seeing how it will come out. It was just a couple dollar bag so you know it's it's really cool and to get it to adhere to be able to make it functional and this is just a project that takes a few hours and even if it takes you longer it, it really is about the process. Just enjoy it. But uh, I love the way it's coming. I'm going to take a. I'm going to let this dry for a good bit, and uh, because I, I get in, uh, <laughs> I want to finish things right away. And sometimes I just need to slow it down and just take a breather. Let it let it sit for a day. Let it cure up pretty good, and then uh, I'll go and see if I'll just add a little bit more details. And I'll make sure I when I whenever I do finish it that I'll I'll let it sit for a couple days before I go to use it. Hey, we're just going to. Boil up some water and raise that temperature to be able to dye some fabric. It's day two. It's been soaking for a day, so we're ready to have some fun on this 1938 uh, stove. It's just pouring out there right now. What a great day to be inside and creating. So we're going to use this Rit Dye More. Uh, synthetics and royal purple. Once this uh, gets almost up to boiling the water, I'll turn it down and I'm going to take my wet fabric down here and I'm going to put it inside. But before I do that, I will have to add my dye and I'm going to add a teaspoon of uh, dish soap. So I got this on medium high temperature right now, just keeping it down just below boil. I love this color. Love it. I think this is supposed to be non-toxic, so that's a good thing. I'm going to have to stir this and flip it over as best I can to make sure that I'm getting everywhere because it is a big, this is a big piece of material, so I'll have to move it around a little bit uh, over the next half hour. We'll see where we're at. Okay, we let this bag dry for a day. And so that it's, well, I want to just want to show you this. So I'm going to just go ahead and go ahead and use my fingernail. And I'm going to scratch real hard there. I like to show you real, re real uh, realities of things. So if you do it yourself, you won't be, hopefully not surprised. But you can see that that's not scratching at all. Okay, and I've got, well, my fingernail is... It's pretty good. It's 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 pretty sharp. So I just wanted to show you that it does it does adhere well when you do sand it, and you uh, and you put this paint on. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a fan brush and a baby brush. I started with really big brushes, a three inch. These are just dollar store brushes and a fan brush here. Nothing quite like paint on the sofa. This will be comfortable. I love colorful pieces. A little bit childlike. A little bit impressionistic. I love realism and abstract. I think my favorite is abstract images. I love abstract pieces where you can see like a photograph in the image, but it was truly not produced by an idea. It was just just absolutely created by moving super fast in movements to be able to apply the image of whatever you're making. 
and all of a sudden images appear. I, I, I just love that because it's like uh, you're connecting with the universe. You're connecting with your spirit, your, your God, you know, whatever you believe in. And it's, uh, it's just so authentic. It makes me feel alive when I look at this type of image that has in, in, Impressionism uh, and is, it's childlike. And I love not thinking, just letting that motion go where it wants to go with your hand. And have fun with it. I just love colors. So much fun. Looking Stay. good. Going on a little trip. <laughs> Gonna get a bag full of money. Is that all you're bringing? No. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? I love it, Dave. I really love it. I love your whole outfit. That coat looks really good on you. Yeah, vintage London fog. This is a fun bag. A lot of fun. I just think it's beautiful. Anyone can do this too. This is this is just such a fun thing. You can have your own complete luggage set. Yeah, it's a great way to take old luggage and make it uh, unique. I really love the way this color came out. It's interesting when you're using the, when you're dyeing fabric sometimes how, depending on the type of fabric, this purple, it dyed so much deeper, darker, and it really accentuates the beauty of the silver in the, uh, the details on this, this dress. But I love the way that you've got the dark against the lighter purple. When I dyed the strap, it actually didn't really pick up much at all on the dye. It's, it, it actually, I, f I find this is amazing how you can utilize uh, the different shades and actually make it work. So if you don't have to bring all the colors uh, the same. And we can always switch up the strap and uh, maybe use something different to be able to use for even a different color on the back. But it's nice to mix it up and kind of go with the flow. I just took these clamps. I love uh, different drinks of clamps uh, when you're actually creating uh, fashion because on this here, what I did is I hiked up about a foot. Heather and I both agreed on, we thought that we didn't like the way the dress kind of came down and then it kind of it, it cinched inward and then it kind of flowed down this direction. We didn't want that. We wanted more of an A-frame. We What we did is we pulled it up about a foot, just kind of pulled this in and used these clamps I put them on the underneath to be able to actually hold in because the weight load was too much for the smaller clamps, even though I do have these little baby ones on here too. And I just kind of cinched it into the way I, I thought it would look good. Heather uh, gave me her take on it. She loves it. That thread looks like it's pretty close. It would be a little light for the, the darker area and I might switch it up, but see how it goes. I like a little bit of hand sewing once in a while. Easy jobs. I love easy. And this is amazing how you can take a wedding dress and just such simple steps. Really believe that anyone can do this. If you ever have any questions, just ask us. Just send a comment. We'd love to try to respond anyhow. I don't know if you can tell that this has sequins on it, can you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, little sparkly. <laughs> so this is uh, the... This, this is, is the skirt. What do you think? I love it. Do you? Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. Like, I really love this. I really love this. I think I'm just putting it with this for right now because I just wanted to, like, purple, purple. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I would wear, like, a, just a t-shirt or something, kind of try to make it a little more, you know, casual or less formal and less sparkly princessy. Oh, but I, just, I really I love, love it. it. Yeah. I mean, you could make this goth, you could do so many things with this. I love it. You could hike it up more if you wanted. I mean, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. Isn't it amazing how you can take a wedding dress and you can just it turn into something every day and something just shockingly beautiful. This you is know? fun. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Dave. But anyone can do this. You guys. came out here and literally spent what? Was it like half an hour maybe? Sewing this up? Yeah. I mean, you did an awesome job. Thank you. 
Oh, like and just like that, you do make it look very easy. I'm gonna say. Well, there is easy way, easier ways to do things, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not everything in life is so complex. The complex part of this whole skirt was the wedding dress. It was the design of it. So to be able to get that for seven dollars, ten dollars, if you can ever get a deal somewhere. Well, and even if you have an existing dress, yes. you know, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What do you want to change? Because a lot of times you can. I, I, I'm repeating myself, but yeah. you can. Yeah. You can change it up. Yeah. We knew when we saw this wedding dress that the top portion would be a good corset, but it was the bottom part, right? Yeah. We, we kind of saw the, the way it was asymmetrical and then it had this gorgeous fabric. And you can really kind of envision if it's a different color, wow. You know, imagine that. And then we were going to initially cut this back train off, but now that we have it ruched well, up, well, it just adds it, so much more. And that's the thing. You, if you didn't have the extra fabric, you wouldn't have gotten this look. So to get the A-frame, you had to pull the fabric up, yeah. you know, in order to get that shape. Exactly, yeah, to have to kind of that shape. Yeah. Although it's still a little bit, I can, but actually it's, it's quite comfortable. Like mm. I can see, I can tell I could sit down and everything. That, that's that's <laughs> nice. <just>. Yeah. <laughs> And you can always adjust it. Like I only did a minimal amount of stitches, so you could always actually bring it up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show you what I just did before I took this dress off. I just went like this because I wanted to see because it was kind of snug right here, uh, and I went like this, and I absolutely love it. You could wear it very high waisted, you know, and I could just kind of maybe use a kilt pin to kind of keep it up like that. But I kind of like this look. And it makes it a little bit easier because it's off the ground more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then it's got the shorter skirt in front. Isn't that fun? It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>